Hello my friends and welcome to another Tuesday of Tutorial. I am Leonardo Perez Nieto and today I will explain you very simply the two-point perspective. First, we will determine if we will use one-point or two-point perspective. If the object is facing us, like this, or like this, straight or parallel, then we will use one-point perspective. But if it is at an angle toward us, like this or like this, then we will use two-point perspective. Let's do a quick review of the one-point perspective. We draw a horizon line and on it we will have a vanishing point, where all the lines will meet. The horizon line is at the eye level of the viewer, and the vanishing point is in front of him or her or it. <laughs> If we draw an object, in this case a simple rectangle, we just need to pull lines from each corner to the vanishing point to get a basic perspective. Like so. Good. Let's draw also the back end. We are doing this as if the object was transparent or made of wire. Now with a marker I will go over the lines that we will see if the object was solid so as to make it more easy to understand. Good! It doesn't need to be right in front of you for this simple perspective to work. It can be on the side. Let's make an example. We draw a square up here and to the side, but it's directly facing us. And then we do the same. We pull all the lines to the vanishing point and we draw the back and the bottom. Notice that if the figure is high, it is above the horizon line and therefore above our eye level, we will look at it from below. While the other one, which is below the horizon line, we are looking at it from above. And I'm correcting my crooked lines. What happened is that uh, since the camera is straight on the paper, if I try to get into a comfortable position, I would be right in front of the camera blocking all the view. So I am all the way down into the side, which is not ideal. Leonardo, quit giving excuses. You are making crooked lines, admit it. Yes, I'm drawing some crooked lines today. It's true. And I'm sketching a second cube, which is farther away. And as we know, the farther away, the smaller it gets. This technique is not only for simple subjects. Let's draw a more complicated one. A strange shape. Like this. If we pull lines from all the angles to the vanishing point, we will get a nice perspective, very easily. If you would like to have more information about one-point perspective, watch my video on the subject. And let's mark where we want the object to end. Very good! Now let's go over the two-point perspective. We draw the horizon line, and this time we start drawing the object by the edge that is pointing toward us. The figure is going to be rotated, as we mentioned at the beginning. The object's side edges are converging at two vanishing points, one on the left and one on the right. These vanishing points are on the horizon line, of course. They can be far away, even off the paper, or close by. The closer together they are, the more extreme the perspective will look. We draw all the vertical lines of the cube vertical, without any tilt. And we also pull the other edges as if it were transparent. I could be doing this with a ruler, which would be a lot easier and more precise, but this tutorial is for artistic drawing, as if you go out with your sketchbook, and in that case, this is the way you would do it. Good, let's do another figure way up here. We begin with the edge and pull the ends toward the vanishing points. The higher and farther away from the horizon it is, the more we would see the bottom side of it. Let's pull the other corners, like this, and we draw the back edge, and the remaining line to complete the side. Very good! This is really fun! Let's go over it with a pen, so that it is easier to see.
Good. Let's do one more horizon line and place the vanishing points to draw a last figure which would be something similar to the strange object that we drew at the beginning. But this time in a two-point perspective and let's plant it on the ground as if it were a house or a building. We began with the edge that is pointing toward us, but this time it crosses the horizon. And then we pull lines from both ends toward the vanishing points. Oops, I banged the camera, sorry. Which, as I told you, is totally on my way. And we draw a line from the bottom end of the edge to the vanishing point. Good. I will mark the sides for now with straight lines so as to make it easier. And then, about at this height, it will have a recess. That can be a terrace or a balcony or something like that. And we go toward both vanishing points. Over here, let's draw a door or an entrance. The top should go actually to the vanishing point on the right, like so. And let's not forget the chimney, like this. The balcony is not going to be all around. It will only be on one side and it will end here. I think it is beginning to look like a building. All right, and we should pull this toward the vanishing point on the right. And now, the height of the door, let's pull it to this side to see where should be the height of the garage entrance. And we will go over all of this with the marker. The two-point perspective technique is very handy because it applies in most cases. When drawing, it is good to first simplify the object to a basic geometrical figure like a square, a cylinder, etc. and then add the detail. With these two vanishing points, we can sketch several objects in the same drawing as long as they are all parallel. If not, if they are rotated to each other, then we need a new set of two vanishing points for each of these objects. As you see, I'm shading all the surfaces that are facing toward the left, as I'm considering that the light is coming from the right. We should also shade the entrances. Alright, we're done with this one. But I want to show you just one more thing. The one and two point perspectives are not only used when drawing one object, but also can be very helpful to find the sizes of other objects as they get further away. For example, here we have a person, kind of. <laughs> and here we will place the vanishing point. If we need to know the right size of a person that is at a specific point far away, we can simply do it like this. If the person is here, we'll measure this much. But what about if we need to have a person which is not on the same line, but is all the way over here, for example, in between the other two, but out of line? In this case, we mark the place where he's standing. From that spot, we make a horizontal line to meet the other one. We pull it up to know the height and back to the right. And now we can draw to the correct size and proportion our person with style. <laughs> He's looking at you. <laughs> we are done with this one. Let me know if you want me to make a tutorial with multiple vanishing points. Thank you. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, share it to your friends and subscribe to find our tips. You know where to follow me. The links are below. And I will see you on Tuesday.